but I think given, I remember the question. given what happened on Thursday, given the reporting uh, in the New York Times and other outlets about the president's uh, more frequent lapses, losing his train of thought, all of us saw what happened on Thursday where he simply could not form coherent answers to many or, or some, if you will, of, of the questions and appeared to lapse into nonsensical uh, answers uh, at the end. Uh, we beat Medicare, uh, for, for instance. Uh, I'm going to ask something delicate, and uh, you, you may not like it. The president may not like to hear it if he's watching. But I think the American people need to get a yes or no answer on this. Does President Biden, at 81 years old, have Alzheimer's, any form of dementia, or degenerative illness <coughs> that would cause these sorts of lapses? And it's a yes or no question. And if you don't know, why don't you, as one of his senior staff members, know? The, the I yes have an no answer for you. Are you ready for yes. it? Yes. It's a no. And I hope you're asking the other guy the same exact question. OK. Well, uh, the, uh, the motivation behind that press conference was clear because Karine Jean-Pierre said it plainly. We want to turn the page. We want America to turn the page. We are hoping to turn the page. I mean, she said it uh, three times. That was quite clear. The page is not turning because there was a lack of answers to the critical fundamental question that was being asked, which is, what happened? What happened that all of America saw? So Corrine Jean-Pierre kept saying, we're not trying to ignore reality. We understand and acknowledge what America saw and witnessed and that that was a really bad night and that that was a bad debate. And we acknowledge that. But she does not offer one, one bit of evidence or reasoning or rationale for why. But other party leaders we talked to are already floating the idea of opening it up to all contenders, having let's call it a five-week speed dating uh, primary, maybe having debates between now and the convention, and then leaving it up to the convention. Their number one concern, who can beat Donald Trump, Anderson? Oh, my God. This whole internal war within the Democratic Party, I try to look away, but it's hard not to look at what's going on. And as you saw in the intro, Jean, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre is desperately trying to defend Biden's performance at the debate. Many people are asking themselves, why? Like, why did he struggle so much? Was it really a cold? Could he have dementia? Could it be Alzheimer's? What the hell is going on with Joe Biden, right? Remember all the times that Donald Trump joked around saying, look, and this is the funny part about Korean Jean-Pierre. She tried to make it about Trump, and I'm like, you can't make it about Trump. Both of them were on the stage. You asked Trump about his cognitive abilities. Trump took a cognitive test already, if I believe correctly. Your guy didn't take a cognitive test. Joe Biden did not take a cognitive test. So this idea of trying to make an apples to oranges comparison with Donald Trump when your guy is not even willing to take a cognitive test, you can't make this comparison, but they still try it anyway because they say, look over there, squirrel. That's what the Democrats are trying to do right now. It is so funny right now. And... As you saw, I gave you all points of the spectrum, right? I gave Karan Jean-Pierre trying to defend Biden, right? Then CNN came in. I agree with their take here. Hey, they're trying to distract. They're trying to make everyone turn the page. Hey, guys, forget about it. Then I gave you the at the end, hey, who could replace Biden? No one ain't got the answer, Sway. No one got, the Democrats ain't got the answer. And the funny part is, they messed them they, they messed themselves up with this situation. Because remember when yo, Robert F. Kennedy, I said Robert F. Kennedy, when Bobby Kennedy was running as a Democrat, he had 22%. People were willing, hey, look, let them have a debate. Democrat, the Democratic Convention, National Conv Committee was like, no, 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 we're not hosting any debates. So now these candidates that they want to push to replace Biden, they can't because they don't have no name recognition because you never held a primary, <laughs> Democrats. Y'all pretend you did and you didn't. You didn't host no debates. Only Fox, only, oh, sorry, Fox. Only Republicans hosted the base. That's why all the attention was on Republicans for the whole damn last year of 2023, the last few months of 2023. All eyes was on the Republican Party because they were the only ones holding a primary. But, oh, y'all should think about replacing Trump, too. No, we're not replacing Trump. Trump won. Trump won the primary, unlike Joe Biden. The, the, the party was trying to replace 
uh, Trump. They couldn't because the people, the voters, the conservatives wanted Trump. They wanted a proven product. He's done. 25 House Democrats prepared to call for Biden to end elite re-election efforts. Right? That's all you've been seeing on the mainstream media. I'm thinking, yo, Obama already gave his blessing. They should just stop talking about it. And the tweets came out recently that that was a lie. Remember, I don't trust anything that comes out of the Democratic uh, Democratic Party mouth. I don't really trust anything that comes out of a politician's mouth. I look at their actions. Because ever since Hillary Clinton said, hey, I have a public policy and a private policy, I go, okay, you're going to say one thing in public, but in private you're saying something else. And it seems to be something true, especially with the Democratic politicians. Because Obama, remember he came out, hey, he had a bad debate, whatever. But in private, he's telling Obama, Obama's telling Biden, yo, you can't win. Right? Tucker Carlson reported from an unusually good source, Obama's tweet about supporting Joe Biden was disingenuous. In private, Obama's telling people Biden can't win and he's therefore in favor of an open convention. Obama would not say whom he supports, nor as of yesterday afternoon had he met personally with Biden to deliver the message. Relations between the Obamas and the Bidens have never been warm. At times, they have been hostile. But recently, they, they have deteriorated further, mostly due to Jill Biden. In the hours and days after the debate, she kept her husband um, away from anyone who might convince him to drop out. Jill Biden is driving force behind her, her uh, husband's re-election re campaign, just as she was in 2020. When other members of the family, including Biden's sister, Val, consider him too impaired to run. The next generation of potential Democratic candidates understand all this as an opportunity and they're, cycl uh, they're circling around Gr uh, Gretchen Whitmer, who is promoting herself. But, you know, uh, later on, there's there's stories, there's um, there's news articles stating that she's rejecting this. Like she's saying, hey, look, I'm not trying to run. Who knows what the hell they're doing? But I want to show you this clip about their chances because end of the day, Democrats, y'all did it to yourselves. Right. The only way I think Democrats can actually win. And this is my dream scenario. If you guys know me on this channel, my dream scenario though is Trump, Biden have more. No, not Trump, Biden. Trump, uh, RFK has more votes than Biden. That's my dream scenario. Just to, te to teach the Democrats, don't pull this ish again. But that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. Because I think that's the only way Democrats actually, Democrat voters, sorry, actually has a chance to make their voices heard. Vote for RFK. That, simple. Don't matter who the Democrats put up, vote for RFK. Because y'all put a senile old man here. RFK could have been the candidate. RFK could have been the Democrat nominee. Y'all pushed him out. But y'all the same party saying threats to democracy. You see why American people... Like, you see why I don't trust Democrats? Now, you can say the same thing about Republicans. But the thing with Republicans, the Republicans' problem... Here, here I'm being honest. Democrats' problem is they double speak, Right? They, they, they like to look good, but not actually be good. Republicans' problem is... They're not willing to stand up for the values, the positions, and the policies that their, their voters put them in office for, right? So that, that's the problem with the Republican Party. Ain't like the Republican Party are, are dishonest or none of that. No, no, it's just they're sometimes known as spineless. They don't want to do anything. Strongly worded letters, right? They don't want to hold Democrats accountable for contempt of Congress. Uh, what's his name? Garland, Merrick Garland. Doesn't want to give up audio tapes for Biden. And now the Republicans are like, okay, we're going to prosecute you. But if we do that, we put you in jail like you did the Steve Bannon guy. For some reason, Democratic voters, liberals are going to get mad at the Republicans. And conservatives are like, yo, do it because we need to hold them accountable. What is the point of a law if you do not enforce it? But this is the game we all play, huh? So look at this clip right here of the CNN analyst. I, I, like, I like a lot how he says it's very data-driven. How he showcased that any person, any Democrat so far that's been mentioned who is not Biden trails Trump. Let's take a look. We have polling yet that suggests that voters want a different candidate? Yeah, this is the whole question, right? If it's not President Biden, then who could it be on the Democratic side? And the truth is, there are no easy answers. You know, I went back and looked at the polling versus Donald Trump for a bunch of different Democrats have been suggested. Gretchen Whitberg, Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris. Look at this. They all trail Donald Trump. So the idea here that we're somehow going to get this magic bullet, that there's somehow going to be some Democrat who can beat Donald Trump easily, I just don't see it in the numbers. At this particular point, 
If Joe Biden takes on Donald Trump, he's trailing. If there's another Democrat who runs against Donald Trump, they too are trailing. Perhaps you want to make the argument you bring in another Democrat who isn't as well known as Joe Biden, who univer has universal name recognition, and maybe they could change the numbers. But the fact is, any Democrat who entered the race right now, at least among those that are being suggested by a bunch of folks, they would all enter the race at this particular point as an underdog to former President Donald Trump. So as you can see, if anyone who jumps into the race right now they'll be at a huge disadvantage. First, they have to spend a lot of money just to get their name recognition up, which is an advantage to Trump, right? Then they have to actually make the arguments against Trump. Now, a lot of liberals, Democrats, they're delusional. They think, oh, I could, like, any Democrat can beat Trump in a debate. The problem with Trump is that Biden is a proven product. Trump is a proven product. Meaning you bring a new candidate, it's always now that question of can he really execute what he actually can bring to the table. Now, it's a two, you know, it's a risky play that could benefit you because then you, you won't be held accountable for all of the things that Biden has done so far. But Trump then can hit it at an angle where he can ask you, what are you going to do differently than what Biden already did now? Biden did, like, if let's say Newsom was the guy and he defends the economy of Biden, Trump can bring that up. Hey, you defended this economy that majority of Americans believe is not a strong economy. Why are you doing that? Gruesome Newsom. Newsom has to answer for that because he defended Biden publicly. So to me, it's not Newsom. And at the end of the day, I think Newsom wouldn't even take it even if everyone tried to give it to him because he's going to be like, nah, y'all trying to set me up for failure. The election's in four months and you want me? Nah. That's a setup right there. So I think that's that's another play. I think if you're like, you know, if you're a smarter politician, you wouldn't take that job. You wouldn't take it. You'd be like, yo. It's Kamala Harris or else. Like, that's the only way y'all switching. Because I don't think any smart politician would want to come into the race with four months. You, you're setting them up to lose. You're setting them up at a huge disadvantage. So it, it looked like it ain't, it ain't happened this way. And it's so it's so hilarious, friend. It's like, when I when do we talk about, like, when Democrats... Democrats always trying to gaslight people, but... When I talk to liberal, my liberal friends or my liberal family members, and I always ask them, yo, why is that every time I make a criticism about Democrats, liberals, Biden, y'all bringing it about Trump? And I say, yo, Trump's not in office anymore. How y'all still making it about Trump when Biden's the guy running things? You complain about inflation, but then somehow you tie it into, oh, uh, Trump would have made it worse. Trump had COVID. Trump had the COVID scenario with limited information. He had no guidance to fall on. And all you guys wanted to lock it down. Years later, we found out your solution, your approach to solving, to approaching COVID caused the destroying, the destructive effects that we're feeling now in society. Kids are falling behind education due to the, to the lockdown, mask up things. We found out it hurt a lot of children born in COVID, their social skills, their abilities to communicate from the fact that people were wearing masks. And it was hard for them to relate or convey emotion through to other people because of the mass situation. Everything y'all approached, everything y'all pushed, everything y'all did, it caused a worse effect than what the Republican states did. Biggest example was Andrew Cuomo versus Ron DeSantis. Y'all was y'all was hyping Andrew Cuomo up. Y'all remember that? Oh my God! They, they had a love. Media had a love affair with uh, Andrew Cuomo. Then when the data came out, he had more COVID deaths than Florida, and Florida was less lenient, was more lenient on the lockdowns. They were they were pushing. Florida was willing to have alternative uh, medical treatment to COVID, and it was getting uh, DeSantis was getting demonized. Death Santis, remember that Death Santis? They're all this propaganda. That's propaganda. Man followed the data. Man followed the facts and say, hey, look, lockdowns ain't working. Open up the state. It took Ron DeSantis two weeks. Two weeks. I know. I lived in Florida. Two weeks it took Ron DeSantis to be like, nah, this ain't working. Democrats, it took years. Even after Biden won, they was, some states were still in lockdown. Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. And if y'all gonna, gonna try to run her against Donald Trump? Oh, y'all gonna call Donald Trump an authoritarian when he didn't force none of the other states to open? He didn't force the blue states to open. He could have. Now, if Donald Trump asks, hey, Gretchen, when, if you were president... Would you have locked down the entire United States of America like you did in Michigan? That's answers that Democrats have to answer for, but they want to sit here and act like any Democrat can beat Donald Trump. You retarded as hell. You retarded as hell. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. You retarded as hell if you think just any Democrat can walk up and beat Donald Trump. You crazy. Because Donald Trump's a proven product already. Even if you hit him at the COVID part. Even if you say, oh, he spent more, more money than Obama. 
you guys in 2020 was pushing for Donald Trump to push a stimulus package because y'all needed help because the economy was locked down. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But then at the end of it, 2020, hindsight, 2020, you want to look back and be like, oh, yeah, Donald Trump is spending so much money. Oh, it's easier to say that now. But in 2020, in the situation, y'all was, was hype for Donald Trump to pass those bills that cost, that put us trillions of dollars in more debt. Look at the favorability rate for the for the bills that were passed during 2020. Y'all all supported it. But y'all want to pretend, oh, Donald Trump spent, spent so much money. You got what you want in 2020, then you get to complain about it in 2024. Make it make sense. Now, I'm not here to defend Trump, but I'm calling the spade a spade because at the end of the day, ain't the politician's fault. It's our fault. Y'all mad about your choices? It's our fault. I wanted Vivek. Y'all didn't want Vivek. Your fault. Like, hey, I'm speaking as someone who wanted an alternative. But then don't make it about, oh, it's the Republicans' fault. Nah, the voters voted for Trump. Nah, the voters voted for Joe Biden. Now you're going to go in the back room and try to decide a different candidate without Democratic voters. Democratic voters, I know we don't agree on a lot of things. I know if you're black, sometimes you hate my guts. But can we agree on one thing? Let's not vote for Biden. How, if you, Don't vote on the couch. Please, please, come on. I, you know me. I'm a, I'm a sports guy. I'm a competitive guy. I don't like to win because the best person was hurt. I'd rather you go vote for RFK. Go vote for RFK. Teach the Democrats a lesson. Make them finish third in the national election. You know how embarrassing that would be for the Democrat parties? The party? The Democrat party would really look at themselves and be like, damn, we messed up that bad that America put us in third place. That's what I want to happen. That's my dream scenario. Can we all agree on that? Let's unite against that. Let's, let's make Democrats finish third place. Let's, let's, let's make that the uniting message of America today. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.